<laughs> I think we're recording. We are. So, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and do this whole thing. Um, hi, I'm Sarah from Thornhill Gaming. And I'm Mr. Kaibot. And uh, this is Will It Fun? Yeah. We have a title. Oh, my God. We have a title now. <laughs> That's brand new. Yeah. Congratulations. We went out, we drank about it. And yeah. then left with a title. Yeah. I didn't even have to. I, I came late because I had work and then they were like, hey, what do you think? We about already this? had a title by the time you showed mm -hmm. up. It worked out great. And then I just got to drink. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you have to participate in the important part. Well, this is true. This yeah. is true. So what but are we talking about today? We are talking about Mothership. This is a sci-fi horror RPG and it is honestly one of my favorite systems. And I will I will preface this with... The system has not fully been released yet. There's and yet a little we've bit of a played story. it and it's awesome. <clears throat> yes, yes. There's a, a bit of a story behind it. So Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG uh, was designed about in about 2019, 2018, something along those lines. Uh, Sean McCoy, the designer, um, also the lead artist in this, uh, just a really nice guy. You can find uh, videos of him discussing RPGs in general, discussing this one, um, really fascinating stuff in terms of the intended scope of this RPG. Uh, this is a really rules light, lore light system. So like this is a tiny booklet. It's 40 some odd pages, something like that. Hang on, where is a page number? It's even less. So this is the final page with print on it. This is 36 page. So. That's, it's this tiny, tiny thing. It's so tight. Uh, it's just really, you'll see there's a lot of like beautiful imagery. It's, well, beautiful, maybe that's a... <laughs> hey, we called Morkboard beautiful. It's I think true. we can call this beautiful. It's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Absolutely. Although beholders have... Many eyes. Yeah. Oh, we got to describe this because they were on like a podcast. Oh, this is true. So yeah. you have to tell people what it looks like. So let me explain what you're looking at. And by you, I mean me. Here is the Mothership RPG booklet. And it's all this just gritty, grungy, scratchy, black and white art. And a booklet is the accurate word. Yeah. This is, this is not a full book. It is literally like it's, it's a booklet. Yeah. It's like it's a, an old zine that you'd pick yeah. up in high school. Uh, it's this very small thing. It's, again, 36 pages uh, with a couple of extra pages for reference um, at the end of it. And it's all black and white. And it's all in this like grungy, scratchy art style. And I absolutely love what it's going for because We'll it's, post some cool links on yeah. our social medias. It's, it's not trying to show you what something is. It's trying to evoke the feeling of space horror. Like this is alien, this is aliens. This is honestly even The Thing. Uh, John Carpenter's 1980s The Thing with Kurt Russell, which is one of my favorite movies ever. Go watch it, kids. Yes. Um, but these are, these are the stories that we tell ourselves when we don't want to sleep that night. And, uh, and this system really dives into the horror of the unknown. Uh, now, if you're, if you're thinking of like H.P. Lovecraft, like Cthulhu, the Elder Gods kind of stuff, sure, it can dive in there. But the most interesting part about Mothership is that it doesn't try to tell you what story to tell. It gives you a framework to tell the story that you want to tell. Um, there are very few dice required. You really only need a d20, some d10s, and that's it. It's crazy. Like the, the small package is beautiful to me because you don't need like seven reference books. You just need your own reference that you've developed as somebody who enjoys these kinds of stories over your lifetime. It's another game that's really easy to travel with. Super, the book is small. You don't need with. a lot. Bring it to a game hall. Go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now let's go back about to the, to the history here. So it was uh, first released in 2018, 2019. I don't have an exact date. Let me see if the book does. Checking 2018, the book. copyright 2018. So uh, Sean McCoy is uh, the developer of this game, the artist behind uh, this edition, and is also one of the, uh, the founding developing members of Tuesday Night Games. That's night with a K. So Tuesday Night Games have a couple of uh, really oddball 
interesting games out there. Uh, and these are board games. So um, World Championship Russian Roulette is one of them. Um, <laughs> Two Rooms in a Boom is another one of my favorites. And these are both like... It sounds very scary. <laughs> I'm very scared already. So both of them are, are social deception games-ish. But more so than that, like Tuesday Night Games uh, is going for games that are unusual. So in Two Rooms in a Boom, everybody has an identity. And it's a secret card that they then share... Uh, with individuals trying to figure out who's on whose team and each team has an objective. So it's this really unique kind of play style. Uh, with uh, World Championship Russian Roulette, you have you you are encouraged to cheat and there are rules for how you can cheat. Oh, fun. And it's just like this, wait, what are you talking about? This is not what I was expecting. And very similarly, this kind of game is, it's shirking the rules that people expect of an RPG. And that's one of the things that I love most about it. It's like, okay, cool. You think you know what it is? Well, read it again. And we've played this. We have. We have. Which effectively was like, you're in space. Here's your mission. Go. Mm -hmm. And if your answer, I think you told us when we first started playing or before, as we sat down to play, you're like, the correct answer for your character to be happy, healthy, and alive is go home. Don't play. <laughs> Yep. Um, so if you're not okay with bad things happening to characters, uh, NPCs or your own, yeah, maybe this ain't the game for you. Yeah. Um, but if you're fine with, if you like the movie Alien, uh, you know, if you like <laughs> uh, bad things happen in space, the game, this is it. Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, the mortality rate is high. The uh, survivability of all characters involved, uh, NPCs and PCs alike. Is very low. We miraculously survived, but we did lose an NPC like yeah. immediately. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Choices were made. <laughs> Choices were made. Without Someone spoiling died. one of the, uh, it's, there, uh, there's a module called Ypsilon 14 or the haunting. It's of fantastic. Ypsilon 14. Um, and I'll show you, this isn't it, but it is this exact size. So this is a module and it is a trifold. Literally a pamphlet. Eight and a half by 11 sheet on one side. Literally a trifold pamphlet. That's the whole adventure. And this took us nine hours to complete. Oh yeah, we played over two nights. Yeah, yeah. no, Ypsilon 14 is such a great starter pack and almost everybody in the community recommends it as just like, hey, what do you, what story you tell? Well, tell that one. You can buy it for like two bucks as a download copy. Uh, and I have known people who have asked nicely on the Discord, like, hey, what should I do? And somebody is like, I will send you my copy of Ypsilon 14, or <laughs> I will buy you a PDF of Ypsilon 14. Um, one of the other things that I really do love about this game is not just the game itself, but the community that's developed around it. So uh, I'm active on Discord, uh, on the Mothership Discord specifically, um, because it is such a great community. Um, while we're transitioning from 0E, as this is called, 0 edition, to 1st edition, which is also an, another way that they're just sort of shirking the norm. Um, the transition to 1E, which is releasing at the end of 2020 this year, or I'm sorry, end of 2022. <laughs> ah! What year is it? <laughs> we'll back that up just a little bit. Um, so I'm very active in the Mothership Discord. And one of the great parts about the Mothership Discord is that it is a super, super supportive group, especially uh, right now. Um, it is August 2022. And the first edition of the game is being released at the end of this year. So like November, December, possibly October, but they've said probably more likely November, December. Uh, so first edition is basically they released this on a shoestring budget. They just put it out there, which is part of the reason why it's so small, because they were like, how can we optimize this release so it can get into people's hands and we can make it cheap so, so people can access it really easily and then... We just throw it out there, see what There's happens. There's a lot of smaller games that are taking that uh, that strategy with how to release. Is yeah. they're releasing like a, a a quick start or a jump start, you know, of just a a really basic rule set and a really basic couple. Maybe some of them have pre gen characters and right. things like that, and then um, release the full game later. Yeah, and it's a great tactic because you want people to be able to engage with your content and being an accessible game in as many options or as many ways as you can. 
that's how you get people to support you because you are supporting them. And I really think that uh, the Mothership team does this really, really well. Tuesday Night Games is doing a great job. Um, so on the Discord, uh, you can reach out to folks and there's a... Oh, so one of the things about the about Mothership is that the GM is called the Warden. So if you go to the, <laughs> go to the Discord, you'll see a whole channel called Wardens. And, uh, and you pop in there to ask questions about like, how do I run this? What should I do? Uh, I've, I've already spoiled this adventure for my players. Like, how do I change it so we can not rock the boat so we can keep on going? Like, there's a huge community out there that's all trying to help you have the best time. Uh, and, and just full of advice, full of good vibes, uh, full of really strong support, which is not something you would expect when you see this image. Uh, with the, so this is Dave. This guy on the cover, his name is Dave. Oh, there's a cat here now. There is, and his name is Binks. Aren't you And cute? again, if uh, you are listening to the audio-only version of this, we will go ahead and post photos on our social media accounts. Oh my God, he's so, so you cute. You can see what's up. What you doing, buddy? We have such a cat. <laughs> sitting literally in front of the book that we yep. need to show Hi, so <laughs> so uh, this guy <laughs> this, as we uh, go around the cat so we're we're showing the picture of the front of the book the front of the book of mothership is uh again a real it's like a single unbroken line drawing of this really unfortunate soul who uh, is in a space suit that has been torn up down the uh, torn open down the center and uh, there are entrails spilling out anyway so this is Dave uh, Dave's name comes from an acronym uh, deceased asset value empty D-A-V-E. Oh. oh, that's so sad. Yes. Uh, I feel instantly sadder knowing that. <laughs> so one of the things that is a constant through line throughout, uh, throughout Mothership is, well, we got to space somehow. Who footed that bill? Okay, well, corporate interests are the ones who foot that bill. So the way that it's generally designed is you have a ship that you do not own, that is leased to you and your crew, and you go out and you're off to do something. You're something... effectively like long haul trucker. Yeah, yeah, your long haul truckers out in space. And long haul are just these, you go into cryo sleep, and then you wake up at some point, at some distance later, to do a thing, and maybe you don't come back because choices were made. You know who else is back? Yeah. Binks. <laughs> Studio cat. So Mothership really dives into the the neoliberal hellscape <laughs> of <laughs> how we got to space in the first place by rich people taking advantage of people who are just trying to scrape by. And it is it is commentary in and of itself, but it's also honestly the most realistic way that yeah. we would have got there as a species. <laughs> So, yeah, the likelihood of us getting there in that fashion is far higher than us, like, having a Star Trek future. We're all like, hey, you know what? Yeah, we all did this together. Good job, everyone. <laughs> yep. oh, oh, I'm going to take a sip of my drink and think about the hellscape we're all living in right now. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Sorry, dissoci dissociating there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Life's been hard the last couple of years, y'all. <laughs> so Mothership is a is a fine, delightful escape from one hellhole <laughs> into another. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you want to disassociate from the hellhole you're living in in real life and go to a fictional one where everyone dies and bad things happen? Mothership. Try Mothership. Disaster in space. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it is it is really fun to dive into just like headlong, no holds barred into like what the hell is happening in space. Um, referencing H.P. Uh, Lovecraft earlier where, yeah, sure, Elder Gods can absolutely be a thing. Um, or it could just be, hey, this mining operation went wrong and you're all trying to escape with your lives. Uh, there are tons of tons of content out there uh by third-party creators uh the the discord folks are or i'm sorry the the creators tuesday night games sean mccoy they're very 
like collaborative forward. So they make it really easy for people to generate this uh, 3PP content and support it as well. So right now, actually, uh, in August 22, there is a lore, uh, a lo-fi lore zine jam happening this month. Um, so You're going to have to elaborate because I, I know will. all of those are words, but yeah. I don't understand what they mean. <laughs> so, um, so like I was... Like I was alluding to before, it is a it is a rules light lore light system. Um, so you're not going to find like a 250 page book about like oh cool well this is how thermodynamics are dealt with and this is how we can achieve faster because light you speed. know what no one cares yeah. no one cares how we got to space or how it works just yeah. that it works. So this is soft sci-fi. We don't care what the engine does. We just care that it puts us from here to there and we got there in an amount of time like i'm more interested in the the economy here like how much did i get paid for being in cryo sleep for seven months while i traveled 600 light years okay <laughs> well cool then we'll discuss that but the the idea here is really just like be in the moment experience the adventure and you don't have to enjoy a giant campaign but you can so it's built very clearly for like one shots or short shots because uh, you're going to die. Somebody's going to die. I don't know how we didn't die when we played. Yeah. <laughs> you made a couple of key decisions that that turned things in your favor. And there were a couple of very, very good rolls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got lucky. Yes. That's another way to put it. So I won't spoil Ypsilon because honestly, I do recommend it for like for a starting out system. It was a fantastic starter adventure. Yeah. And honestly, there were several. It is It builds tension in a great way. It builds horror in a great way. And there were several points where I was just leaning over the table going, I'm going to throw up, you guys. I'm so stressed. I'm going to vomit. <laughs> In know, the was, best way, I had so much fun. But then I was doing my job. <laughs> I love horror. horror. So that <laughs> moment of I'm going to puke, it's so intense. It's like one of my favorite places to get to. And that's how I know it's good. Yes. It's it's really and and again, I can't I can't say it enough times. Like it is simple. It is rules light. It is trying to get you into the game. It's trying to get you into the story. It's trying to show you that you don't have to have sci-fi as like as a dense meal, you can have it as a snack. And this is, this is exactly that. This back page is realistically all that you'll need for like your DM screen. You'll just be like, okay, what are these things that happen here? All right, cool. I'm good. We're ready to go. Um, so it's just a series of, uh, Tables, effectively. Yeah. It's a series of tables and a couple of flow charts on how things happen. Now, one thing about the the transition from zero edition to first edition, they have done, they've taken a hatchet to zero edition. There are a lot of uh, components of like the combat system, for example, that they've, they've worked to simplify. So in the earlier one in zero E the attacker rolls and then the defender rolls a save and then whoever wins better gets what they're going for. Um, but that felt a little clunky and it was like, okay, I'm rolling and then you're rolling. And unless I succeed and you fail, then nothing really happens. So it became a lot of management. So in their transition from zero E to one E, they made it faster and deadlier. So you're actually combat More is likely to die in yes, the new one. Okay. Yes. Uh, they, uh, combat is meant to be avoided. If you are firing guns in space, that's a bad idea. So this is less like combat focused and more strategy survival horror focused? Yes, very, very, very much so. Um, so a huge adoption thing and adoption of the system, uh, I guess it's more conversion from other systems. Um, it's it's a large topic in the, in the Discord community because a lot of people are coming from 5e or coming from like the the huge popularity of Critical Role uh, and the focus that that has brought on other RPGs. And if some people isn't, they're just not into a fantasy setting. Okay, cool. Well, let's try Space War. Oh, Mothership, I've heard of this. All right, well, okay, what's our first battle like? You're like, oh, uh, you don't want that. Believe me, you do not want this. <laughs> so um, I think probably the best way to get into this would be to roll up a character. All right, let's roll up one. Okay, okay. well, hey. 
Look, I have this character shoot right here. Oh my gosh, it's like we planned it. Oh my goodness gracious. And I'm you know what? A pencil. I'm going to roll one as well. Okay. Just because right. I'm halfway through. So I ran an Ypsilon with, uh, with Sarah and her husband Gabe and a couple of other, uh, other of our friends. And, oh, actually, no, it was, all right, I'm going to get my, my story straight now. So I ran Ypsilon with Sarah, Gabe, and our friend Tony. And miraculously, they survived. And now, I don't know how. I really don't <laughs> know how we didn't die. And now I'm running Ypsilon again with a different group of three people. Because I'm so curious to see how these different groups transition through this this horrible well, we're scenario. all excited about it because one of one of the players in this new group you're running mm -hmm. through the same adventure we did is tony's wife kathy who's yeah. another like one of our really good friends so yeah it's just getting to watch your friends and go okay what part are you at yep like no 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 what you so what did you do here <laughs> like and it's so fascinating because the the just in the very first two moments like that two events that occur that the the party has to deal with like there have been fundamentally different choices made that are subtle but vital so yeah. you can you can split off into a huge number of directions with just a very simple decision so it's a ypsilon as just as the one, one adventure not very replayable from a player standpoint but very like replayable from a warden standpoint. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, if I was introducing this game to anybody, like a new player who hadn't, uh, who hadn't seen this particular, uh, module, I'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. We're playing Ypsilon. This, this is really all you need. Yeah, I would yeah. agree. I would agree. But once you know the deal, it's hard to play it again. Yeah. It's, Cause then uh, you know the deal, but that's also just like an, a two sided piece of paper that you can't read a second time exactly yeah so it's not it's not a problem to have spoilers but it would be an interesting it would be an interesting game to play ypsilon again with the same group of people because you would make different choices you would we have would, but it would be so difficult not to just metagame it super hard it's but like that would be an interesting i guess challenge. it would be interesting but it's like it's like rewatching the sixth sense you know the end yeah Oh. How does it, it, it changes, fundamentally changes how you see the whole thing. <laughs> but I guess, I mean, that, that in and of itself is interesting. Yeah. So you'd have Turning to be really RPG willing to not met, a metagame. -like. <laughs> but the, the, the setting itself is open world enough that you can use Ypsilon to jump off of and then do pretty much anything afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially depending on how Ypsilon ended, if anyone's still alive. <laughs> good luck because that's a good if <laughs> yes all right so let's look at these characters uh so for starters the uh, the character sheet is a single page and it has a bunch of dots on it and it also reads like a flow chart so there's step one roll for your stats and we'll have links to access and print your own character sheets and mm -hmm. everything so what you're going to need is you're going to need 2d10. Gonna grab well, those. first I'm going to bring over, you know, our little dice tray. I don't like um, 2d10s. I deeply prefer d100s. Well, you can roll a d100. It's going to be a little weird to turn a value of 2d10 into a d100. Or no, that's for just the, when we need the percentiles. Yeah. Excellent. When you need percentiles, I'm always going to choose... D100s. Perfect. My giant dice bag because I have a problem. <laughs> a few D10s. D20. Done. Brilliant. Got him. Okay. So first thing we do is we're going to roll 2D10 four times uh, for each of our stats. Now we have four stats. Strength, speed, intellect, and combat. All right. uh, so let's just start that. We're going to write these in pencil because uh, depending on which of the classes we choose, and there are only four classes, then your stats and saves will, will be adjusted. Shift. So, all right, let's do it. Strength, 2d10 plus 20. Okay. Not going to roll in the tray? Are you too good for my tray? Too good for your tray. So I've got a 27 for my strength. So it's the 2d10 plus 20. That's right. Cool. 
You got a 34? Oh, man. You're beefy. And I've got a 34 for my speed. <laughs> I got a 25 for my speed. Sure makes up for that 34 yeah, strength really that just rolled. Oh, 28 for my intellect. Oh, geez. You 25 are, for my intellect. Oh, my. Oh, there we go. My combat, 37. Okay, that's slightly better. 31. 31. Thank you. Math is hard. <laughs> 31 combat. All right. Cool. Okay, so both of us have two stats in the 30s and two stats in the 20s. Yes. And that's about right. So the way that this, this is played, so let's say that I needed to make a strength check, I would roll percentile dice. So I would go over here and I would grab a D10 with a 10s unit and a D10 with a 1s unit. Or a D100 because they're D100. superior. And I would roll those. So I've rolled 85 on my strength check. My strength stat is 27. For this, I'm trying to roll under that. Gotcha. This game deals with stat checks and, and uh, save checks, which we'll get to in a second, in a very unique kind of way. Uh, so as we progress in our character creation, we're going to generate uh, a character that has skills. Most of the time, your skills, you just get to auto succeed. Like if I have mechanical repair, you're like, all right, this thing is broken. Cool, do I have time? Yeah. Do you have the tools? Yep. Okay, no roll required. You just repair the thing because your character can do that. It has assumed knowledge. Exactly. Ass assumed success based on knowledge. Precisely. So these saves and stats, you roll them when you're under duress because we'll get to this shortly. Stress is the biggest part of this game. All right, so let's roll our saves. We roll 2d10 plus 10. So these are even lower. So my sanity save, we got sanity and fear and body. My sanity save is 14. Oh my God. sanity is 21. Nice. And my fear is 18. Ooh. Now I'm now I'm rolling good. What the absolute <laughs> shit. That's another 21 for fear. 16, 26 for my body. And a 22 for body. Oh, man. You've got a nice... I like, got good stats for sweet. those saves. So saves, on the other hand, are you are encountering something that is horrifying or terrifying. And those are two very different things. Uh, horrifying being like, wait, I do not understand. And you'd probably roll a sanity save. Terrifying is, oh, something's leaping out at me or I see something that like that frightens me, I'm going to roll a fear save. And a body save is kind of a catch-all for you need to react to something either that you're aware of or for your body to fight something off. Because there's a lot of, we'll just say sickness in this game. And yeah. that sickness could be uh, an alien biology trying to rewrite your DNA from yeah. scratch. So. Things, things happen. Yeah. I so, say sadly as <laughs> definitely things happened to my <laughs> character in our game based on a bad body save fail. Yep. Yeah. 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 We're going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't figured that out yet. Some, okay. Something's going to happen to her someday. Mm -hmm. So we have these seven, these seven roles and now we get to choose what kind of character we've got. Uh, so there are four classes. There's a Marine, Android, Scientist, and Teamster. Now, a Teamster is, if you've watched Aliens, Ripley. Ripley is a Teamster. The uh, in, Actually, let's go back even further. Alien, that entire ship is almost entirely Teamsters. There's uh, Ash, who is a scientist, uh, and who also happens to be an android. So, Kids, if you haven't watched Alien, go watch it. Just, it's just, one of the greatest oh movies God. ever. So just good. go watch it. So good. Uh, and then Aliens... It's one Teamster and all Marines. So you have these really different kind of mixes and each of these, each of these players or each of these classes is fundamentally differently equipped to handle the weirdness of space. So your, your, your Teamster is like your long haul trucker. And then mm -hmm. you've got scientists, that's pretty self-explanatory, but there's mm -hmm. lots of different flavors of scientists. And you got your Android, which 
again, self-explanatory, but again, lots of variety and, and styles of play. And then you got your Marine, which is like your security, your badass, your combatant. Yep. Absolutely. So all of these things are just like, all right, well, do you know who you want to play already? Oh, well, given that my, my highest two stat rolls were strength and combat, it seems like I've got a specific direction to go into. That sounds good. Yeah. So I think I'm probably going to go with Marine. All right. For so, this one. So then you've selected your class, your so Marine. Bubble in Marine on my little flow chart here. And then on this on on your character sheet, it tells you, all right, you've chosen a Marine. These are the things that you do to your stats and your saves. Yeah. So for a Marine, you add plus to plus 10 to combat, plus 10 to body save, plus 20 to fear save, and I get an extra wound, and we'll talk about wounds. Exactly. So go ahead and adjust your stats. What are you going to do? Hmm. So we've got a Marine. I, I have a, a high speed and a high combat. My strength and my intellect are both pretty pretty average um you know what i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a teamster all around like just kind of doing the things plus five to all stats and plus 10 to all saves all right so yeah a teamsters are generally considered a little overpowered but at the same time like you're all in space and you're in a horrifying scenario and all of your stats are very low so overpowered is extremely relative uh, and once we get to skills, like all this of is that this is definitely a system that you you kind of want to favor min maxing because if you're sort of a generalist, you're gonna die. <laughs> well, being a generalist and being a specialist, neither of those is necessarily no. Yeah, out. I mean, you could still die even, but yeah, if all your stats are like mediocre, you're kind mm. of screwed. So you definitely want to play where you're. You pick something you're good at and you bump that at every opportunity. Yes, absolutely true. So yeah, like a scientist is really nice. Uh, Android is really nice because you've got a couple of really powerful stats. Um, but ultimately, a bad roll ignores all stats at all. Yeah. So doesn't necessarily that's, mean that's it's going to save you. Yeah. Okay, so... Your stats could be great, but if you roll 100 on that uh, check... You're still screwed. <laughs> okay, so I've got my new stat values and my new save values. You've got your new stats yep, and your new updated saves. updated everything based on my little flow chart here for my class. Okay, and now we roll 1d10 plus 10 for our health. Now, the way that health works, at least in this current version, and they might be changing it, uh, is you have, think of it like your your health bar in, uh, in a fighting game or... Uh, your number of hearts as uh, in Zelda, for example. So yeah. you've got like one heart and it's broken into a bunch of little chunks. So go ahead and roll 1d10. It's not amazing. <laughs> so I rolled a six and you rolled a three. Yeah. Okay, so we have in each of our wound tracks and each of our wound tracks is like one of our little healths. I have 16 health in my wound tracks. And I have two of those wound tracks because I'm a, a teamster. You, on the other hand, you have 13 in each and you've got three because you're a Marine. So you got all these little bubbles. It does explain and walk you through exactly what you're supposed to do. But yeah, in this little bubble chart. So I'm a Marine. So I would have all three of these wound uh, tracks open. Yeah. And the easiest Up way to... Up to 13 points each track. Right. The easiest way to adjust this is to just scratch out all the bubbles that you, you don't have access to. Mm -hmm. So you've got three rows of 13. Uh, now, the fun thing about wounds... Fun? I'm not sure if it's fun. The, the way that wounds work is if you lose all the wounds on one track, then a bad thing happens to you depending on how you received that wound. So if you had a rock fall on you, the rock will do a certain amount of damage. And if it kills an entire wound of yours, then you get a major crushing event because it's bludgeoning damage. So the weird thing about this, and I use weird in, in a way that could be read as badly, but I personally enjoy it, is that if you roll badly when a wound happens, you can just die. So when a wound happens, you roll a d10 on the, the wounds chart, and it tells you like, all right, you've been bludgeoned. All right, what did you roll? Cool, nothing happens because you rolled well. Or take some more damage because you rolled poorly. Or you are dead 
because <laughs> well you got crushed by something sorry that's that's exactly how space works it's very very dangerous um so fighting bad avoid all the damage that you can because you are so squishy so, run so away squishy. kids run away all right so we've got our health yep now we're going to look at stress Stress has two values, what your minimum stress is, and that's just like, I'm in space. It is hell. Everybody starts with two minimum stress. And then our current stress, because we're just starting out, is two. The way that I like to play it is if you're the captain of the ship, and there should be a captain of the ship, just the, the primary driver, the one who calls people and says, hey, can we dock? Uh, it's a little more stressful, so I like to raise their stress just a little bit. It's tough to be in charge. It's tough to be in charge. All right. So what is the other thing that's interesting about each class? Each class has a unique trauma response. And a trauma response is, for example, uh, for the Marine. So for your character, whenever you panic, every nearby friendly player must make a fear save. Well, because if the person that is trained to deal with high stress combat scenarios is panicking, this means you should it be worried. Not, <laughs> it is not good for anybody. Um, my teamster, once per session, you may take advantage on a panic check. So this is not actually a, a, a detriment. This is an improvement for the teamsters and one of the reasons why people think that they're overpowered. So a panic check happens when you critically fail a roll or when you see an alien creature for the first time or something particularly bad happens, like you witness one of your partners die, that sort of thing, then you rightfully check to see if you're panicking. Similar to sanity checks in like Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah. So you've got yours, I've got mine, androids just so we can round them out, fear saves made by, near friend by friendly players nearby are made at disadvantage. So the thing about androids in this particular system is that androids are the embodiment of Uncanny Valley. Mm. When, you, when you see an android in like Star Trek, you've got Data, or uh, Alien, you've got Ash. You've got these, these, these entities that are mimicking human beings rather well, decently well. These take a step back. They're like, no, these things are unsettling. Androids are really... We're not at the point of Futurama where like Bender is your best friend. Right. We're not there yet. Yeah. But it could very much be Bender because Bender honestly is, is a also terrifying individual. <laughs> Agents of chaos. Yes. Uh, so androids are supposed to be, they're, um, they're very smart. They are very tough uh, and they're terrifying. So you may have an android on your team and that's... Not necessarily a good thing if you're in <laughs> terrifying situations because you don't trust them because they're not human. So there's this whole underlying tension between like the human beings and the android race that's just sort Man of like... Man and machine. Yeah, it's built into the system and it's not outwardly called out uh, except in this one thing, which then colors the entire system. We're like, okay, androids, not really sure that we can trust them. So androids, I, I just love that whole thing. Uh, and then scientists, whenever you fail a sanity roll, all nearby f players, uh, nearby friendly players gain a stress. So similar to the Marines, when the Marines fail in something they're supposed to be good at, everybody else suffers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that happened. It did. It yeah. did. It happened in our game. <laughs> so, oh my God, I love it. Okay, so this one, this isn't something you do. This is just something you know. So I, as a teamster, once per session, I take an advantage on a sanity or on a on a panic check. Mm -hmm. You, as a marine, whenever you panic, that's bad. Yeah. Okay, and then the the second to last. This is where you start to like color in who your character is. Is you pick a couple of skills. So for a marine, you automatically get military training. You automatically get athletics. And then you get to choose an expert skill that you have access to or two trained skills. So the way that skills are working here is you have trained skills, expert skills, and master skills. And everybody has a bit of some, some version of a, a mixed bag of that. Now, when you're making a check that involves a skill that you're good at, you add either 10 for trained, 
15 for expert or 20 for master to that skill. So it's basically a... It's a boost so that it's easier for you to roll under that check. Exactly. And that's, again, under stressful situations. So if you're just like, hey, I'm trying to fix this thing. All right, you've got the time and the tools, no check required. Really only when you're doing something that's stressful. So having these skills is really useful. As a teamster, I get uh, industrial equipment, awesome. Zero G, awesome. Bonus, a trained skill and an expert still. Uh, I'm just going to say I've got chemistry and explosives. So as a Marine, I automatically get military training and athletics. And my bonus is one expert trained skill or two trained skills. Yes. I'm going to go with, so I got my military training and my athletics. I'm going with hand-to-hand combat. Nice. Because badass. That's right. Cool. We have our skills. Awesome. That was so fast. That was so fast. What do we do now? So now we figure out what our loadouts are and what equipment we have. Uh, So loadouts are basically the things that you have as the beginning, uh, at the beginning of your adventure. It's the equivalent of your equipment in like D&D. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Real quick, roll 2d10, multiply that by 10. This is how many credits you have. You know, credits, because space. See, six and five, that's 11. Math is hard. <laughs> and that is times 10. Yes? 110. 2D 10 times 10. I got 110. And I, coincidentally, also rolled an 11. Ah. 2D 10 times 10. All right. So we've got 110 credits. And that's really for just like, oh, quick, I want to go buy some bullets. Because bullets are very helpful for shooting things that are trying to kill they you. They are. They are. Yeah. You want to shoot things. Or, you know, run away from things. Or hide from things. Or definitely not fight the things no don't fight the things really it's very don't fight the things they're scary (laughs) so then each uh each character has a loadout and a trinket and a patch a loadout is just what you've got what your starting gear is so as a marine uh go ahead and roll a d10 and we'll find out what your loadout is 10 10 okay oh what i get you got a tank top and camo pants. <laughs> I love this so much. Okay, tank top, camo pants. A combat knife. And a stim pack. A stim pack is sort of a catch-all, like, I'm going to jab myself with some nanite meta gel and get some health back and it's a stop it's a healing bleeding. pack it's a healing pack yeah it's an emergency healing pack yep and that is all you get that's all i get you're rambo i am i am so rambo you i are. am space rambo <laughs> uh so there's an armor points uh little bubble there mm-hmm. this is for your tank top and camo pants one one ammo or armor points Armor points are for when you're taking damage. Your armor uh, will prevent damage up to that. And then your armor will no no longer be useful. And you'll take all the damage addition. uh, All the damage above that number. So, yeah. You're... uh, I'm not... I'm not... I'm Rambo. I'm I'm definitely... Anyway. Okay. What's next? Okay. I'm going to roll for mine as a teamster. I roll a nine... And that's going to be, oh, I love it. What'd you get? So I have loungewear <laughs> for one armor point. <laughs> <laughs> I have a crowbar. We're a chill fucking ship. Yeah, we are. We, we oh, are. it gets better. Wait, pain pills. Oh, yeah. And a six pack of beer. The other person on the ship is the dude, right? (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) All right. Now, here, the next, the the final stage is trinkets and patches. And trinkets and patches have almost no functional purpose. They're entirely to inform your character. This was my favorite part of rolling out characters because uh, it, it, it went from... I'm not quite sure who this person is yet to I know exactly who this person is now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And trinkets and patches are, they're a thing that people, like the experience that you've just described is 
why this system works in such a flexible way and why it's okay that it is so fatal because you're really encouraged to to dive into the fact that this is a person that may be nothing like you and it's not it's not so uh such a deep commitment to have someone that you're playing this role of and you're going to just watch them die because oh cool we talked through all of this and it took... It takes you a few minutes to yeah. roll up a character. It's really easy. Yeah. It takes like four or five, maybe. So, so the investment in keeping them alive, like you play someone like Pathfinder, it took me like two and a half hours to make a character. Uh, I'm really invested in that character not dying. Yes. <laughs> but this has taken me five minutes. And while I want them to live, I'm okay if in five minutes I have to roll another one. Absolutely. Okay. So trinkets and patches are going to tell us who we are. So the way that I do this is I roll two percentile pairs, uh, or you've got a percentile pair and a D100. So you want to roll them both, just so you have two numbers. I'm going to roll this. That one's a, I got a 33 on the first roll. 33 and a 44. I got two doubles. Okay, nice. That's probably critical success. Uh, or critical failure, depending on which stat you're using. Yeah. All right. So what we'll I'm going to do in a second. is I'm going to read you 33 and 44 from trinkets and 33 and 44 from patches. So you'll have one pair of 33 and 44 and one pair of 44 and 33. And then you can choose which pair. Which one I want. Yeah. All right. So option one is you have pills, Eureka nut. I don't know what those do. And as your patch, you have work hard, party harder. <laughs> okay, that definitely needs to be the patch. <laughs> What's the other okay, option? The other option is your trinket is a campaign poster from your home planet. Okay. And uh, do you know what a caduceus is? Yeah. Okay, so it's the snake staff with wings on it, usually the symbol of a doctor. Mm -hmm. And your patch has a caduceus and says, fix me first. <laughs> oh, those both paint such a serious picture, but I think I'm going with the first option. All right. So the first option that was uh, pills. pills. Areca nut, A-R-E-C-A. Uh, is that like a real thing or did they just make that up? So apparently it is a real thing. And this was uh, in our second Epsilon game. Somebody rolled this and we looked it up and we were just like, eh, nah, doesn't really do, do it for me. But let me see if I can. Eureka nut. The Eureka nut is the seed of the Eureka palm, which grows in much of the tropical Pacific, Southeast and South Asia and parts of East Africa. It is commonly referred to as the betel nut, not to be confused with betel leaves that are often used to wrap it. I don't know what this does. Okay. Okay, cool. Neat. The Eureka nut. Oh, this is a link that's purple, which means that I've I've looked it up before. Which probably is the link that you clicked the last time you looked this up. That would be entirely up. it. Okay, health effects. Habitual chewers of betel leaf and areca nut have generally increased risk of developing a range of serious diseases, including cancers of the mouth and esophagus. So it's like chewing tobacco. So it's tobacco. like chewing tobacco. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm okay. going with it. And the, and my patch my patch was... Uh, work, work hard, hard party, party harder. harder. Yep. You've already got a reduced life expectancy. <laughs> yeah. This, this dives into that. In my okay. tank top and camo pants. Oh, my Lord. I already know who this person already is. already know exactly who this person is. This is amazing. I kind of love, <laughs> I love, I love this person already. So, all right. My two options for my team, sir, are 27 and 73. So, option one, a pair of ivory dice. Or not, not just a pair, just ivory dice. So, and 73 is, oh, my God. It's a patch that says, my other ride married you. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, okay, okay. So I've got loungewear. Uh-huh, yeah, that sounds right. Some dice. Yeah. And my other ride married you. 
Yeah. I, I don't know that I need to look at the other one yeah. because I feel and, like And you have pain pills. Yeah. Yeah. This tells me everything about this person. I'm going to look at it just for fun, but I have already made my decision. Okay. Trinket is spray paint and the patch is powered by coffee. No, no, not as good. No, not no, as good. Like, so you'll know the answer. By the time you get to that, you'll definitely know the answer. Ivory dice. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my other ride married you. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I kind of want to play with this character just to see how oh, badly yeah. they die oh yeah they seem like a kind of an awful person oh yeah. yeah it's gonna be great all right we're done these are our characters this is these it that's names. the whole thing that's yeah. the whole character you don't even necessarily need a name right off the bat because we figured out our names uh when when we played when you ran us uh the group of us through ypsilon we came up with our names like in the first 10 minutes or so of playing mm -hmm. because you figure out who the other people are and in the case of ypsilon you've been on the ship together for a little while yeah you You've known each other for a while so you've worked with these people you understand who they are so figuring out who they are and how their personality is will kind of helps you dictate that it, it just talk to each other for a few minutes in the very beginning and you'll if you don't automatically know a great name for your character um i think ours were all inappropriate jokes <laughs> yeah we had uh, our marine uh was sergeant rock yeah. Uh, and, and one of his loadout options was uh, erectile dysfunction pills. Yep. Or that was his trinket. Oh, yeah. yeah it was, yeah, uh, it was yeah, uh, performance was... enhancement pills. Yeah. Shoddy ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. And yours was Tina. Uh, yeah. But I, I was, I was TNA. Mm hmm. So you got around, you, you got to that in a specific manner. Yeah. We got to that <laughs> by a series of jokes. That happened in the first five minutes of talking to each other in character. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was yeah. it was just it was such a beautiful ride, because um, my other ride married you. <laughs> Tells me everything about you. Immediately. <laughs> it really does. I just want this person to not make it. I really want. They them. won't. No, they they, they won't. won't make it. They're gonna end up being like shoved out an airlock by yeah. somebody that they've upset deeply, and they'll deserve it. So yeah. if you are rolling a skill check, yeah, let's say we've got to do something. All right. So I would roll my percentile dice, or in my case, I prefer D100s. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, we're, let's say you have broken down in space and oxygen is leaking from the room that you're in, which is which has been sealed from the other side. That's called a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Okay, so you're in that situation now. Uh, you, this marine. <laughs> so you've got. So you've got people on the other side of the door saying, hey, I'm trying to fix this, but I really don't know that I can. Um, you got to help from your side. Do something. So here you are in this situation. What do you think that you'll do? Uh, well, I mean, I guess it would depend on what my options are, but so if their me, oxygen is leaking, okay, what, yeah, what would, what I'll would give you my some options more, be? I'll give you some more uh, specifics about this. Yeah. All right. You are trapped in an airlock. And the airlock's exterior door uh, has been slightly but not badly wedged open by a piece of space debris. So it's leaking oxygen fairly quickly, and you're going to be out of oxygen in, you'd estimate, less than a minute. Is this a situation where I can, I have something accessible that I can pry open the door enough or open the door enough that I can force that piece out? Um... Uh, We'll Can say, I like brute force strength check this? Okay, so you could brute force strength check it, but since you asked to see if there was an available tool, uh, I'm just going to roll a d10. I'll show you. I'll make you roll a d10. Okay. Uh, if you roll above a five, yes. I rolled exactly a five. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Why okay. <laughs> okay, so you have a... Uh, there is a pipe that you can tear loose that you're fairly sure is non-critical to the function of the spacecraft. It's certainly less critical than you being able to breathe. Oh yeah, right. I so need I need air. Yeah, so you've torn you've torn this pipe off the wall, and you are now going to try to pry the thing that's wedging the door slightly open back into space. Yes. Okay. So since you 
have done a smart thing, I'm going to give you advantage on this check. Which means I get to roll twice. So you're going to roll what you get. First one is a 44. Is a 44. Okay, so now let's, this is perfect. And I'm using my, what, my strength stat? You're using your strength stat. Which my strength stat is a 34. Now, 44 is uh, a palindrome. <laughs> it's <laughs> same number twice. Uh, so when you roll doubles like this, it is either a critical success or a critical failure. And in the case of my strength being 34, I rolled over my stat, that would be a failure. Yeah, so if you were only rolling that one roll, you would be critically failing this this attempt. Now, what a critical failure is, Means is- Camel you... Pants is dying here. <laughs> Probably. Uh, either that or, um, we'll get to fail forward in a second. So mm -hmm. go ahead and roll a second time. Let's see better this time. As long as it's not a critical fail again, it can only be better. Uh, no, it can't be better. That's a 59. That's so, still, I'm definitely failing. Well, here's the but thing. But at least it's not critical this time. Right, exactly. So that's the good thing with advantage is that you don't take the lowest roll, you take whichever roll is less disastrous. Uh, so critical And with fails. doubles, doubles are, a, if they're over your stat, that's a critical failure. If they're under your stat, it's a critical success. Exactly. So the fact that 59 is not a double, it's still over my stat, it's still a failure, it's not critical. Right. Um, now, one of the things that's that's frequently talked about uh, in the Mothership Discord and generally about Mothership, I don't know if it's going to be called out specifically in uh, in the first edition rulebook, but it's the concept of failing forward. And this is something that uh, is usually mentioned in... Uh, mentioned towards the, or spoken to the warden specifically. And fail forward is something I think, especially for a system like this, which is high fatality, uh, bad problems, and they only get worse. Failing forward is, okay, well, you have failed at the thing that you were attempting, but failure can look a lot of different ways. Um, and this is something that happened in Ypsilon as well, is like, okay, well, most of your most of your roles are going to be failures. You've got a 30% chance at best for your raw stats to do something. So That's outside of something that you are specifically good at. Right. So the idea of failing forward means, okay, well, maybe you don't succeed exactly as you intended, but you'll move, you'll progress. So what would you do in this situation? I've tried to pry the thing out of the airlock. Okay, so what happens here is... I fail at prying the thing out of the airlock. What happens? All right, so if I were to say we're just doing what would happen in D&D &D 5e and you just fail, well, okay, cool. You fail and you die because you were unable to uh, prevent this from happening. But I'm not going to do that because we're playing Mothership and we want to fail forward. So you succeed in jettisoning jettisoning the object back out of space but as the uh, uh as the airlock closes it closes two of your fingers inside oh. of it so take uh take d10 damage okay do i get to pick which fingers okay i yes. rolled a six so you rolled a six so your i would mark that off on my my damage bubbles i would mark six off mm-hmm there you go, six. So your pain is not necessarily that your fingers are entirely broken and, and torn off, but they're very much crushed and you are in an extreme amount of pain. So Good you thing can... you have some pain pills. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so I probably open the door from my side and you are still able to breathe. Oxygen's there, but you have... We have another problem. You have so another problem. So it failed, but... I'm not dead just by a dice roll. Exactly. And I think this is one of my favorite things about what the system encourages is that it it's very much collaborative storytelling in terms of like, you're going to try to do something and I'm going to let you do it. But if you fail, it's still going to be problematic. And I immediately went to character decision of, buddy, oh my God, I know you have a stash of pain pills. Yes. So yes. It, it, it also encourages uh, character work. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that... As a warden, this is a fun system to play because uh, because you're really trying to explore how people solve problems. Um, so the idea of, do you have a skill that's relevant? Well, great, cool, you get advantage. Uh, you get plus 15 and you know what you're doing already. So yeah, i am give you advantage on that, why not? It really lets you be flexible with how to approach this 
horrible hell that you've all found <laughs> yourself in, which is the vacuum of of emptiness and everything's trying to kill you. Awesome. I really like this system. I like it a lot. <laughs> so we should play. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I guess we should say before we go that we'll put links to everything in uh, the description. And so you can find the website and the discord and all the things that we showed you, the pages with the loadout and the trinkets and them and everything. Yep, absolutely. And actually, while we're talking about available options, uh, I want to show you the website real quick. And I want to show you something that's really, really good about the website. So we are ready to hop over to mothershiprpg.com. And what I'm seeing right here, we've got this nice title. We've got the vision of the box set. Uh, that is coming out later this year, uh, 59, nine, uh, 59 core set, and 99 deluxe set. And the deluxe set has got some extra fun goodies in there. Um, their, their ethos is written here as well. Uh, the ethos of Mothership is survive, solve, save. Pick one. Oh, yeah. So accurate. <laughs> it really is. So accurate. Um, so that's... That's one of the, just, it's a tagline here, but it's, it's legitimately it's the purpose. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to scroll down a little further. We see uh, more stuff about what's in the box set. We see a couple of uh, images of uh, some really great art. Uh, it's sort of silly. It's really pulpy. It's very like Lucy Noodley cartoon uh, kind of version of a scientist and a teamster and an android and a marine. A uh, little bit about each of them. Easy to play, hard to survive. Uh, never miss a beat for wardens. They've made the rules easy. And again, like I, I just love how tight this this book is. Uh, I love how how dense the information is and how illustrative it is. Uh, it's just it's such an evocative uh, evocative world, even without a bunch of lore in it. This is the opposite of a crunchy system. Exactly. Uh, we're going to keep on scrolling down. We got some screenshots there. Uh, what people are saying, got some really great quotes. Uh, it's won some Ennies, uh, really deserved it. And then here is probably one of my favorite things. So you can buy the book or you can download the free PDF. So I'm going to open up this free PDF link and it's going to take me to drive through RPG. Uh, drivethroughrpg.com is a great resource. I've gotten a ton of RPGs from them. Sometimes they even have bundles of like, hey, pay $18 and get 14 of these RPGs that we've decided to oh, turn into collection. Oh, I got a collection. huge, couple of huge bundles yeah, of games it's just on there. Like a ton of great stuff. So the Mothership RPG PDF is available on drivethroughrpg.com and you can pay what you want, which means like, if you're a college student or you're just having trouble making ends meet and you want to just like buy it for a dollar or 50 cents, um, you can do that. They just want you to, to have the content so you can use it. So I really respect that. Really appreciate that. And I think it's a, a great call. Awesome. Yeah. So, hey, this is Mothership. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> to the emptiness of space. Awesome. So, thank you so much for joining us. Um, will it fun? Like and subscribe. You'll see all the information uh, that we've been talking about in the description. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.